Hi everyone, I am Siddharth Tassiri with Kivitula Marasinga from the 6th lab R&D team. So in this video we are going to do a brief introduction to machine learning with machine learning pipeline. So let's first understand what is machine learning and how it differs from the traditional programming. So in traditional programming we have a data which are the inputs and we have a set of outputs. So basically we are writing a program to convert those inputs to the outputs. So for an example let's consider a calculator program. So we have some inputs and we have certain outputs. So if we are, we know what are the corresponding outputs for those inputs. So in that case, we can code a program to convert those inputs to outputs. That's the nature of traditional programming. So basically for computer, we give the program, we install our program in the computer. Then we give our data as the inputs, then we get our outputs. But there are certain problems that we cannot solve in that way. For example, how can we write a program to identify a cat in a picture, right? So uh, if I have a bunch of images of cats and dogs, how can I come up with a solution to classify those images as cats and dogs? So that kind of problems cannot be solved using traditional programming. So we need machine learning concepts for such scenarios. So in machine learning, we, we don't uh, create a program Actually what we are doing is we are giving the examples and the expected outputs. So the computer needs to come up with a solution how to do, how to identify and how to classify things. So it's basically for the computer we give the inputs and the expected outputs. So the computer needs to understand how the, they, how they are mapped and come up with a solution. Actually that program. So that's the concept of machine learning versus traditional programming. So now let's see what are the types of machine learning. So basically when we are given with a machine learning problem, we first we need to identify what's, what's the type, what's the problem we are dealing with to apply the appropriate uh, solution. So basically there are mainly three types of machine learning types. First one is supervised learning, unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning. So basically in supervised learning, we have a data set with the expected output. As I mentioned uh, earlier, in our cats and dog example, our data set is the set of images of cats and dogs. And the answers are the labels, whether it is a cat or a dog. So we give the we give the data and we give the answers. So that's that's why it's called a supervised learning. We we give a kind of a there is a teacher. Because of the, because of the nature of the data set, there is a kind of a teacher. So because of that, the the computer can identify the what is the relation there. And there are two subcategories as well, classification and regression. So basically in classification, we try to predict a, a categorical variable. So our cats and dogs example is a classification problem because there are two classes. We call them as labels. They are cats or dogs, the answers. The other type is regression. So in regression, what we are doing is we are trying to predict a continuous variable. For an example, let's say we are trying to predict the temperature of tomorrow. So we know temperature is a value, continuous value. In that case, we, we cannot apply classification uh, mechanism. So we need to use uh, regression problems. That's why I said we need to properly understand the problem we are dealing with before applying machine learning. So then next our type is unsupervised learning. So in unsupervised learning, we don't give the outputs. So basically we are giving only the inputs. As I mentioned before, in supervised learning, we give the data and the answers. In unsupervised, unsupervised learning, we don't give the answers. So the computer needs to identify the properties of the data set and come up with an insight of the data set. So again, there are two subcategories of uh, unsupervised learning as well as clustering and dimensional reduction. So clustering means, so the, we have the data set. So the computer is going through the attributes of the data set. Then it tries to make some groups. So we call those groups as clusters. So each cluster has some common data, data elements. For example, let's say we have a population of people. So it will come up with certain groups where each group has certain common attributes. It could be your gender, it could be where are you from, it could be where are you are working institute, similar uh, such cases. So that is called as clustering. So in another application is dimensional reduction. So in dimensional reduction, typically it is applied in big data anal analysis. So we have a lot of data, thousands of features. There could be redundant to unnecessary features. So we need to remove those unnecessary and redundant features. So basically we call them as meaningful compression. 
we remove the data unnecessary data uh, preserving the insights of the data set so in that case we need, we again apply unsupervised learning we call it as dimensional reduction then the ter third machine learning type is reinforcement learning so unlike other two types the reinforcement learning go through a continuous learning process it's like uh, for the correct predictions we give a bonus mark for the wrong predictions we give a penalty so so because of this bonus and penalty the model always try to uh, reduce the penalty and in, uh, increase the bonus so ideally it will uh, gradually increase its performance it, it is in, uh, gradually increase, increasing its accuracy because of this continuous learning process so it is very different from the uh, other two types uh, we discussed earlier so first we need to understand what's our problem and uh, what is the type of machine learning algorithm we need to use then let's see what some machine learning terminologies so here i have added three terminologies which is very common in machine learning so let's first start with what is a model so basically a model is just an algorithm so we need to tune this algorithm uh, such a way it will give us a, a meaningful meaningful outcome for example uh, we need to predict the weather it's it that is outcome so we need to tune our model uh, such that it will give our best results so that, such that tuning process is called as training so we give our data set to the model that process is called as training so if our model has properly trained we can use the model to get the accurate outcomes so that, pro that process is called as making predictions so ideally we have a model we do the training after the training we get the predictions so that's the uh, basics of machine learning terminologies now let's uh, go through some major applicable areas of machine learning so first in, it's very very prominently applied in natural language processing so natural language processing is basically adding the ability to computer program to understand the human language so basically uh, just think how how it is difficult to write with traditional programming how we enable such kind of feature, features to a computer understand the human language it's kind of impossible so we, we cannot come up with a general solution uh, to understand human to human language so basically machine learning can come up with that features as well including text to speech speech to text language translation so and you may have seen things like spam filtering in email services so it's again a classification problem because we need to we try to classify as email as a spam or non-spam two two classes so it's a classification problem so this kind of features are now available because because of this natural language because of this machine learning techno techniques and again the stock market prediction is another widely applicable area so we know the stock market is not very solid and stable there are ups and downs and these ups and downs are not very random there are underlying reasons for those so basically we, we can apply machine learning to map those patterns so we can invest wisely and we can maximize our profit again in social media services very very widely applied so in platforms like facebook you have think, you have seen features like people you may know so it suggests you new friends based on your current friends and things like suggestion for your image uploads so it, it uses facial recognition technologies and of course better at targeting based on your searching searching and activities in your uh, social media it gives you better ads so these kind of features are now available because of this machine learning techniques another thing is video surveillance so nowadays video surveillance is not just video cameras so they are powered with ai so you have see you you, you can search this in online so this video can recognize what you are doing so it can identify whether it's a vehicle whether it's a person or and your behavior so if there's an un, un, unusual behavior it tracks and it gives notification so especially in traffic we can apply these 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 are available in traffic monitoring so these kind of features are available because of this machine learning technologies so what you just saw are some outcomes of this machine learning the applications of machine learning so in order to develop this kind of machine learning we need to go through this machine learning pipeline so we call this as machine learning pipeline so if you are trying to solve any machine learning problem we need to go through this machine learning pipeline at the end of this pipeline we get a model where we can deploy and we can get the, our expected outcomes so there are a series of steps in this first one is data gathering as i mentioned before 
in machine learning the the key thing is data we need to have proper quality data so our first step is data gathering then we do some pre-processing to improve the data quality then we do feature engineering to get more insights of the data and we develop a model based on those data and finally we evaluate our model whether it is uh, good or bad regarding its accuracy so first let's go through what is data gathering so data gathering is as i mentioned before collecting data there are several techniques uh, first one is collecting by yourself for example if you are running a business you have transactional data you have bills and everything so these could be your data another thing is crowdsourcing so it's like you can create an app or web application and deploy to public so they can add data there so you will get all those data by yourself so it's called as crowdsourcing and another thing is from third parties uh, for sure you can use some uh, government or non-government organizational data so you can use those data to solve a machine learning problem so then we have we have data collected from different sources now we need to do is we need to integrate those data from different sources so that can be so we know so we we, we, we gather data from different sources so dif in different sources data could be in different different formats it could be databases it could be data cubes or it could be just flat files so how can we handle those kind of different data so that's the problem of data integration uh, so there are possible there are certain possible problems in this uh, data integration first thing is identity identification so for example there could be a single person in different uh, different databases in different uh, different types for example let's consider a uh, person called nimal pereira but in another data set he may represent as n dot pereira with its initials so we know these two guys are same but we need to identify that one so that's the harder part so there are certain things like using the NIC number so that kind of techniques we need to use in order to do this identity identity identification another thing is this data value conflicts so there could be features like in 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 uh, one database it could be in different format but in another database it could be another format for example the weight could be in kilograms in one database and it could be in pounds in another database so we need to uh, match those conflicts and the final thing is there could be derivable data for example we can derive age from the uh, birthday birthday so in that case we need we we might not we might not this age feature because we can derive it from the birthday so in that case we need we, we need to handle those kind of uh, issues as well so we need we need to you we need to follow this data, data integration process very in tedious manner because that's it, it will affect it will have a big impact on the quality of our data so once we have done the data integration process then we have the data preprocessing so my friend Pivitra will continue here onwards thank you Siddharth hi guys I'm Pivitra Amarasimha now let's look into the next step of our machine learning pipeline which is data preprocessing so in data preprocessing what we are doing is we are we are cleansing our data so the first thing we do in data preprocessing is handling missing values so in real world data is not perfect as you can see in this diagram some part of data is missing so we can't use this data directly on our machine learning model so somehow we need to fill these values the first thing we can do is we can just ignore these values so if we have a data set of 1 million so we have hundreds of data points which has missing fields we can just ignore them so when it comes to a smaller data set, assume we have 1000 data points and out of 1000 uh, about 100 data points has missing fields. So we can't just ignore them. So then we need to fill those values. The simplest thing we can do to fill those values is just uh, use the nearby, uh, nearby value. So it could be a next value or previous value in the row. Or we can replace those missing fields using mean or median of that column. So when it comes to an advanced technique, we can predict that value according to that distribution of that data. So using these kind of techniques, we can fill missing values, which will give us a more refined data set. So due, uh, as Siddharth mentioned before, if we had have a more clean data set, we can do more predictions and with higher accuracy. 
So the next thing we do in data preprocessing is noise removal. What is noise? Actually noise is usually unwanted uh, data that has no correlation with our target value. So we, as you can see in this image there are numbers. Uh, other than numbers there are some unwanted data as well. So if we are going to try an image processing uh, model on this image we have noise on this image. So our model will not perform better in this kind of scenario. So why this data noise happens? So mainly noise occur due to the improper data collection methods. So this noise will lead our mislead our model and our prediction will go wrong. So we need to somehow remove this data in our data set. So after removing this noise we have some benefits. The main, main benefit is it reduces our training uh, time. So, so if we have noise in our data set our model will try to represent those noise data points as well. So it will take some time. So then it will reduce our, uh, so if we have more clean data set, uh, it will reduce our model becoming overfitting. So we will uh, more talk about overfitting in later slides. So what we mean by overfitting is uh, our model will try to represent noise data points as well as I mentioned before. So then we can't use that model in a different data set. So that's the th uh, thing we need to tackle uh, using noise removal. So finally this will increase our accuracy as well. So we have a more clean data set and it will improve our accuracy. So another thing we do in data preprocessing is standardization and normalization. So in machine learning models we do what we do is we compare data fields and, uh, and try the correlation between our target value. In order to do that we need our data points in the, some kind of same format. In order to do that we have standardization and normalization. So what is what is mean by standardization? So standardization is basically Z score. So in standardization what we are doing we are, is we are rescaling re re the features to have a properties of, an Gauss, of a Gaussian distribution. So when it comes to normalization which is known as min-max scaling we are shrinking our data set between 0 to 1 or mi minus 1 to positive 1. So using these kind of techniques we can convert our data set into a same format and we can compare those data fields and uh, identify patterns. So another thing we do in data preprocessing is sampling. So, uh, so if we have a classification kind of problem uh, we, ha uh, we have classes. So some classes may have large number of data points and some classes may have very few data points. So this is called as data, uh, class imbalancing. So if we try, try to train a model with class data set with class imbalancing, our mod model will uh, perform better in uh, majority, uh, majority class but it will perform poorly in minority. So in order to reduce this we have score, uh, sampling. So there are several sampling techniques. The first sampling technique is oversampling. So in oversampling, we in, uh, increase the uh, increase the data points in minority class. In undersampling, what we are doing is we are reducing the number of data points in the majority class. When it comes to SMOT based approach, we are synthetically using SMOT to do sampling. So another thing we do in uh, preprocessing is outlier detection. So in most of the machine learning problems we try to represent generic public. So in general uh, in the general uh, data set we will have outliers. Among us also there are some exceptional ones. So in machine learning problems we try to represent those general ones not the exception ones. So we need to remove those. In most of the machine learning problems we remove these outliers. But in some cases like anomaly detection we need to have them. We know we need to have them. So depending on your machine learning problem you will need to uh, decide whether we need outliers or not. So another major step in machine learning pipeline is feature engineering. So what is feature engineering? So in a uh, machine learning problem we have data fields. So using those these data fields we are creating new features which have more higher correlation with the target value. So in order to create features we need some experience as well as some analytical knowledge. So with time we will get experience and we, we will be able to create more correlated features to our target value. 
So using feature engineering, what we are basically doing is creating new features. So then correlation analysis. Now we have set of features. We can't direct, uh, we can't blindly uh, give all these features into our machine learning model. We need to identify most correlated features. So using correlation analysis, we can identify the highly correlated features to our target variable and give those features to our machine learning model. Also, this will uh, remove the red, uh, redundancy as well. So redundancy as well in our feature set. So using correlation analysis, we can refine our feature set. So as the, as the, as the next step in our machine learning pipeline, we do, we do our model construction. So depending on your machine learning problem, you will have to decide whether you are using a classification model or, or regression model or clustering model or, or dimension, dimensional reduction model. So this is a uh, very critical part. So uh, if, you, if you haven't selected your machine learning model correctly, you will lead to some uh, errors. So, so depending on your machine learning problem, you have to select whether uh, the appropriate uh, machine learning uh, model to solve your problem. So then hyperparameter tuning. So now we have uh, a model, then we need to uh, mod, uh, tune its parameters. So what are these parameters? For an example, let's take a random forest model. So, so in a random forest kind of model, we have uh, number of trees. So number of trees in a random forest model is a parameter. So we need to identify the uh, uh, correct number number of trees that will give us the better better results. So we need so this that is hyperparameter tuning. So for, so for a particular model, there may be a combination of combination of parameters that will give us the better results. So using hyperparameter tuning, we are we are trying to identify these combinations of parameters. So, so using that combination, we will get better result to our machine learning problem. So as the final step in our machine learning pipeline, we do model evaluation. So in model evaluation, what we are doing is we check whether our approach is correct or wrong. So the common mistake we do in machine learning is biased variance. So this is a trade-off. So what is bias? Bias. So let me explain using an example. So we, for an example, we think for a particular machine learning problem, we can solve it using a simple linear regression model. So we, we call, this, call it as high bias. So our model is too simple and it has very few features. So as a result of it, our model will perform very poorly on training data set as well as te testing data, data set. So th then what is variance? So variance means uh, our model is too complex. So our model try to represent every data point in our training data set. So our model has so many features. So due to this, we will, our model will perform very well in our uh, training data set, but it will perform very poorly in testing data set. So we need to identify this trade off and try to have an in between, between variance and bias. So let me explain this graph. So this graph is related to an actual scenario. So this graph represents the frequency of happening earthquakes in Japan. So engineers try to predict this graph using a machine learning model. So they try to represent all these data points. So they, they had a high variance, but actually this graph is a linear one. So they missed a important earthquake. So actually due to that, they, the Fukushima disaster also happened in 2012. So as you can see, this bias and variance thing is a critical thing. So you need to decide uh, the in between, uh, between bias and variance in order to solve a practical machine learning problem. So due to bias and variance, we have overfit and underfit. So as you can see in the first image, they, this is underfitting. So they are trying to use a uh, line to separate these two classes. So this is not enough. So in underfitting, our model is too simple. So uh, it will perform poorly in training data set as well as testing data set. So as you can see in the third image, our model is too, uh, every data point is represented. So, so 
they have separated all these data points so our it is an it is an overfitting so our model is too complex and it has large number of features so as you can see we can't use this in a different one so it will give very it will give wrong results in a different data set in an overfitting kind of scenario which is similar to high variance so our model will perform uh, poor, uh, very well on training data set but it will perform poorly on testing data set what we need is in between which is the second one this is the appropriate fitting so there we have tried to uh, separate most of the data points but we have few two so this kind of model will perform uh, well on training data set as well as testing data set so what we need is a uh, uh, what we need is a model similar to the second image so it will perform very well on our training data set as well as testing data set so now let's look into development tools so so using development tools we can do all machine learning techniques so so in machine learning we are using python and r as the main languages so we have libraries like scikit-learn tensorflow pytorch so these libraries contains all the models we need and we have mxnet which is a deep learning pipe uh, uh, framework so when it comes to platforms these platforms has all these resources and using these platforms we can do uh, large scale machine learning projects like amazon sagemaker and amazon emr so when it uh, if we have if we want to solve a large data set we can use these platforms and we can very quickly train our models so that's concludes our session so thank you very much